Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu in New Orleans this week saying, if you're going to get Iran to step back from the abyss here, you've got to be serious about using force, and somebody's got to make that pretty clear. Are we headed there? Well, I think that's a, a greater prospect given the election results, not because it's where the administration wants to go, and frankly not because I genuinely believe that the Republican Party is aligned in, in an inexorable fashion toward uh, military conflict with Iran. But I think what we're going to see, and we already have seen from Senator Graham the other day, is an escalation of the rhetoric on Iran, uh, an incentive for the Republicans who are to some extent divided. I mean, the Tea Party has this kind of strong strand of libertarianism, isolationism, fiscal conservatism, which wouldn't in fact lead you necessarily to, to military, uh, 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 yet another military action in the Middle East. But Iran is a rallying point, and it's, a, it's an issue that Americans see in fairly black and white terms. So the administration has this kind of short-term, long-term dilemma. The short-term dilemma is they'll have talks, most likely in, in the next few weeks. The best possible outcome of those talks would be a, a very basic um, inadequate agreement, a sort of stepping stone, something that might create some confidence, might build some positive momentum. How do you sell that kind of deal on the Hill, given that your interlocutor is someone who denies the Holocaust, who has uh, promotes conspiracy theories about 9-11? How can the administration possibly try to argue that this is the start of a successful engagement? And that's your best case scenario. The other problem is the, you know, the continuing talk of war, which will frame the Iranians' intentions. They right. took Newt Gingrich very, very seriously during the 1990s, his talk about regime change. It really created some expectations among the, on the Iranian side that they responded to with greater assertiveness. And I think we may see some kind of a, a kind of uh, very vicious cycle with, between Washington and Tehran. Bob Kagan, I was struck. Uh, President Bush, who's promoting his new book, uh, gave an interview in the Wall Street Journal in which he said... Basically, we're in very early days with regard to Iran and Iran's diplomacy. And yet I think about what is the prospect of President Obama devoting so much political capital to build a case against Iran di diplomatically that could end up in the use of force. And so I wonder, in fact, is there something that's a tripwire far short of that, namely the Israelis? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I want a definitive yeah, answer, by the way. A definitive <laughs> yeah. answer, yeah, and with a date and yeah, all the that. Date and yeah. plans, the if nature you have of it. the operation <laughs> and the whole thing. <laughs> oh, look, I mean, uh, Martin knows probably better than I do what the Israeli uh, thoughts are right now. But uh, I get the sense from talking to Martin and others that the Israelis are not itching at this point to launch military attack. I think they're hoping that through a process, and I think the administration is hoping that through a process of uh, surreptitious degrading of their uh, program. Uh, and with the sanctions biting, I think, they th I think they think they have time. I don't think this is something that is going to happen. We're going to be at a crisis point in, in six months or even in a year. Um, if, if the president is lucky, he won't, just like Bush was lucky. I mean, he, he managed to escape his presidency without having to make a big decision on Iran. And I'm sure they would love, this administration would love to get past this election without having to make a big decision. And maybe he'll get lucky enough and, and that'll happen. But again, we're, we're talking about newsier items this week, Martin. Netanyahu out here saying, you got to step up to the plate here. Yeah, well, that, that was interesting uh, from my perspective as somebody who kind of knows Netanyahu, worked with him uh, closely. He is much more of a Republican than he is a Likudnik. Uh, he's a, he, he sees himself very clearly. Is that a good thing or a bad thing, Martin? Yeah, <laughs> value judgment here, Bob. But, it, but that's his mindset. And that means he has a great relationship with the Republicans, mm -hmm. particularly those on the Hill who are now uh, in control of, of the Congress. Um, and I thought that him that coming here, first of all, meeting with the Vice President, but his office putting out these, these words about time to put force on the table, and then going to the Jewish General Assembly uh, and telling basically the, the American Jewish community same message publicly, was basically sending a signal to the Hill of, come on, guys, it's time to put pressure on the administration to get much tougher on Iran. And, and, and that's important for two reasons. One, it kind of fuels a political dynamic that I think was already there on, on the Republican side. Uh, and we've seen how that worked in the Clinton administration when uh, the demand for uh, regime change in Iraq fueled the Iraq Liberation Act, which became a consensus. Democrats and Republicans overwhelmingly supported it in, in the House and then in the Senate. And it really pushed... Uh, President Clinton towards a regime change approach. So that's a dynamic. That's one point. The second thing is that Netanyahu, I think, feels a, a new confidence that he didn't have before. 
that, that he now has essentially the Congress with him, and that gives him much greater ability to stand up to any pressure that might come from a weakened uh, President Obama. And so that's the other dimension that we saw this week, is that uh, when announcements of more uh, building activity in Jerusalem came up, whether he knew about it or not, I don't know. But when it came out, this time he was, his people were quick out of the box, and we see it in the press today, saying, you know, rejecting any kind of sense that this is a problematic activity. This is Jerusalem, this is ours, and we're going to do what, what we have to do here. Uh, and that was in the context of the president basically expressing concerns about that in Indonesia. So I think what that means overall is not just that we're going to see um, a greater assertiveness on Iran from the Congress with the, con the consequences that Suzanne was talking about, but a, a, a greater uh, or less willingness to respond to presidential demands when it comes to settlement activity, mm -hmm. which is going to have an impact on the president's other flagship issue, which is the ability to try to achieve a resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. All right, we'll come back to this. Ken, I want to bring you in on another issue of the day, and that's the president's trip right now. I mean, what's, what's garnering headlines is opposition from uh, China, support in India, but certainly European uh, condemnation as well, of the Federal Reserve's action to try to uh, prop up the U.S. economy. Um, what's the significance of the, of the trip and some of the actions the president's taken? Well, overall, the trip uh, has a variety of purposes in India and Indonesia <clears throat> to bolster our relationships out there with India to get it moving forward again after a sense that it had kind of plateaued. Uh, with Indonesia, uh, it's the most important Muslim country, uh, Muslim majority country out there, and to, uh, to revive what had been a somewhat 